hello, hello. Tyler Bryden here, CEO and co-founder of Speak AI. Very excited today. This is our version of what's new in Speak. This is the March 2024 edition. I was on a little bit of vacation. I was in Mexico. I was in the jungle. I was by the water. And so to come back and see some of these changes that have gone live while away, it just gives me so much confidence, so much excitement and, and trust in our team and just this wonderful sense of alignment on what we're accomplishing and working on here so we can make this platform better for you. I'm gonna pull up this slide deck. There's a lot of content in it. This could be a long session, but we're also gonna cut these up into clips and everything here, and we'll move through these as smoothly and gracefully as possible. While I pull that up, that's all, Aria. Take a second to introduce yourself, and then we'll jump uh, right into the session here. All right, perfect. Hello, everyone. This is Vatsal Shia, co-founder and CTO at Speak. And uh, yeah, super excited about the changes we have made and how these are all aligned for the end users and what, what are the unique values you can get with this update. So excited to go uh, deep on how to configure and how to use all these changes we have made. Hey, everyone. My name is Arya. I'm the business development executive here at Speak AI. Super excited to be here, similar to the last times that we did it together. I might not be here for the entire session because I got a bunch of calls lined up in the middle of this session, but would be happy to walk you through some of these new updates and address some of those like new updates that has been requested so many times. And I'm very happy that they are live on Speak right now. Yeah, yes, Arya has had a, a difficult job as someone growing a speak here, because not only does he have a complex product to understand, we continue to add these incredible releases here. And over the next few months, we'll, we'll continue to see changes. But I think with some of these core things that we're going to go through today, it really closes some loops that we've been working on at Speak AI for a long time. That's why I've also got this little tagline here, the world's leading all-in-one language data solution. Now, a lot to pack into that statement, but I just feel that we are striving towards that and making incredible progress, even as a, a small team with this innate focus that is driving this vision and allowing us to excel and put these releases together in a successful way, coherently and quickly at an absolute breakneck speed. And a lot of that is thanks to Vatsal and Sai and Saloni, who have been doing an incredible job bringing this all together. Vatsal, anything you want to add here before we jump into the releases? No, let's dive in. Definitely. This is only the changes we are talking about. We have made what's new in speech. This is not Q1 changes, just the an update to all the listeners. Okay. Yes. And Thank then just know. quickly, top teams using Speak. And we continue to see this growth here. We love the people who are using and we see everything from you know a solo individual entrepreneur all the way up to large enterprises. And that's one of the strengths of our system, the flexibility within it for you to customize the analysis, the work that you're doing in the platform to fit your needs. And so we'll continue to see that and we'll see some more logos added to this. So let's do it. What's new in Speak March, 2024. So I'm gonna jump into the first, first major release. So automatic AI translation. For years, we have focused on transcription. People have come to say, hey, I need to translate this now. Can you do this here? And we say, no, export this, go somewhere else and then do that and really, didn't make that much sense, but it was a big undertaking for us to pull this all together. And so now, as of today, you can go into Speak. It works with 99 languages. So just to think, I wanted to put this number on the table here, 9,805 combinations of translation. If you break that down, if you think of French to Welsh and, and then Welsh to Arabic, but Arabic has specific regions, it really does open up this incredible amount of opportunities for you working in language data and then translating back and forth. That's all. We will do a, a demo and walk through this a little bit, but anything that you want to add here, I know you were instrumental in this release and undertaking. Yeah, this is a big undertaking, as you already mentioned. The reasoning are, because if that's audio and video file, how should we translate because there's the speaker changes. If it's a text file, a long form of text file, then how do we structure that for the end user to get the value because that's the most important part. So again, we are releasing into the different versions. This is, I would say, still V0.1 or V1.0, where we are allowing you to select the language. And as you go through the demo, of course, you're going to go into the step by step. But the overall idea here is to allow you to convert your transcription to any language into the translation and will create a new text notes. And that's the power of the speak while having 
even the text editor because now if you find any gap from the translation because that's your expertise as a user you can just go and edit those parts and i'll talk about what is that 2.0 look like are right, anything you want to add here i know this is something that you've seen in intercom chats in conversations for a long time how do you feel about translation any other thoughts for everyone watching here today I have a live client right now who was asking for translation from French to English and we have been getting this request so many times that I feel like this was like a crucial part that we needed to address and very happy that to see it here as well as I tested out the quality of the translation myself in the languages that I speak or know and honestly it was very good I can say that the accuracy is high uh, the quality is good and I'm really excited to see how other people think about this feature and how they can benefit from it. Uh, I especially know that this will be a crucial point for researchers and for insights managers and people who are conducting quality research. Sometimes they want to also translate their interviews or focus groups into another language, especially for countries like Canada, uh, we are bilingual. Sometimes like a project is for a government entity, you need, you need to address the project in both languages. And I would say even beyond that, generally research teams are looking to have a sample, a, a repertive set of, of population. When they're doing a study, that needs to include the, the entire population in that study. And whether they're speaking Mandarin or French or Portuguese or um, Spanish, there's these huge populations directly just in that example of Canada, as you mentioned. And if you're not including them in the work that you're doing, you may be missing out on different valuable perspectives. So just wanted to highlight, does work for audio, video, and text. We talked a lot about audio and video here, but you can dump text directly into the platform and then translate that uh, immediately here as well too. So how do you get to translation in the platform? We've made this about as easy as we possibly can. I've got some example, some Amazon reviews, some short text notes that we can take a look at. Say I want to translate one of these I've got a nice file. All I have to do, hit translate, select the language. We'll go in French to keep up with our Canadian bilingual connection here. That is processing. You can create new jobs from the same area. But if I want, I can hit view file. The text is there immediately and the insights have also run. So really it's that simple. This will be also possible at the folder level. So you can bulk translate across an entire folder at once as well as selecting multiple languages and all of that good stuff. I just have one more note here. So when you translate to the language, by default, the original language of that file will be disabled. So English to English, it doesn't make yep. any sense. So that configuration has been made. And the second version for audio and video is to make it interactive and also make it uh, meaningful and keep it into the same interface. Meaning if you are transcribing an interview from English to French, then it will be stay under the same file, which is the v2.0 we are working upon, which will not convert to the actual text file, but uh, making sure the speakers are aligned, the timestamps are there, everything is clickable, and you can swap through those languages from within the single interface. I would definitely look forward for more feedbacks and how can we improve. Uh, Beautiful. And just on that note, as Vatsal mentioned for now, a new text file is created and it will show you the language that is in. So then very obvious for you what file uh, it is. Uh, Aria is not only gonna get to see one release here, I think in this time. So we're moving on to another, like to me, monumental release within Speak that continues our journey of this leading language data solution. I know I have pestered and bothered Vatsal for this for a long time. And so this one feels really good to have go live. and. I think sometimes there's these theoretical things that you want to include in the application, but you don't necessarily see the request come. And we were lucky to have some awesome customers come in who required this as part of the work that they were doing. Why did they need it? I'm trying to build this really fully fledged knowledge base that could work for their internal team to be able to access the knowledge of the business. And also they wanted to flip that publicly to other people through an interface on their website where they could ask questions and instantly get these intelligent, quick answers. And to do that required audio, video, and text data that they had, but they also had built out this website with all this information. And so how could we access that, exactly this functionality, scrape the web page, but even more, grab an entire sitemap, pull all the web pages from that sitemap and instantly import them into Speak, grab the text off those pages and then add them to the knowledge base. So anything that you want to do or any question that you ask, it includes that information directly in it. That's all, Arya. Anything you want to add about the 
website scraping and the sitemap functionality directly in Speak. And then as always, we'll jump into a, a demo. Here. I just want to say that I need to jump off now um, and just say goodbye to everyone. We'll say bye to Aria. Aria, thanks so much for joining. You got a lot to learn and share with clients over the next coming months. So uh, I know you'll be uh, working hard to do that. Thanks again for joining, yeah. giving us some insights. Good luck on the call and we'll okay. see you on the uh, other side. Thank okay. You. Thank you so much. Goodbye. All right. Okay. Back to the web scraper. So uh, you can dump the sitemap link and all the URLs are available. You can see into the list items. Uh, we try to fetch the names of the pages as well so that you can connect and relate uh, to those pages. Right now, still a lot of automation needs to be put in place, but one thing at a time, for example, exclude all the URLs with the style. For now, you just need to make sure and remove those components, or I would say those pages from the list so that you can make sure that you're uploading only the blog or certain articles. Uh, so that's there. These are very instant. We do run on the clusters, very quick, responsive in nature. We fetch the data from these pages. And also we try to maintain the structure and remove the header and footer because that's not the actual data you want to look into and scrape through your pages. Because a lot of website structure are different. We try our best to cover, I would say 80 to 90% of the accuracy when we scrap these pages. There are some limitations. For example, if someone tried to fetch through any pages which are blocked completely to scrape those pages with those meta details included in the HTML, it won't work. So just some highlights there and back to you, Tara. Yeah, no, I think you you touched on one point about we had a site that we were working with that did not properly define the header and the footer. Yeah. And so some of that data came in. But the great perspective of this is that the system is intelligent enough when you're asking questions to either filter in or filter out that information. So we even say your website is not as perfectly ideally structured as you would like, and I don't think anyone's is. Really, that issue is minimized through the intelligence of the Speak system. So I quickly wanted to touch on just a couple of use cases, and we'll walk into this demo. One of them, which we had already talked about, knowledge bases. And we've seen some incredible case studies from the combination of Klarna and OpenAI, VoiceFlow, Intercom, who are really taking these you know, web pages and this knowledge bases and then flipping them out into customer experiences to help with support. You can do that directly and speak today. But we also support these other types of use cases around competitor analysis or market analysis. And then generally, when you're doing some type of research, you are trying to include outside sources or perspectives into that. So you have a very comprehensive view of the work that you're doing along with the focus groups, the one-on-one -on -one interviews, the survey data. And by allowing this as another layer within Speak, it just opens up these infinite possibilities for you to create this curated, perfect data set that you can derive insights from. Vatsal said, hey, there's going to be some more automation connected to it. So we will eventually see this in Zapier. Uh, we will see it uh, as an API integration. And this will open up even more wonderful automation and use cases within the system. For now, let's jump into the actual platform and do a little uh, demo. Uh, I wouldn't say it's hiding, but the web scraper is sitting in the new upload option there. And then you can see website URL. So as I mentioned, we can do an individual link and I'll just grab one to show how that works. So we've got the import option, take a second, but pretty darn quick if I say so myself. And then you can also choose where you want to send this file. So in this case, it's just going to go to text. I'm going to upload that site link and that will be immediately ready. So say I want to now visit that file. It will be sitting here. I had done one previously and you've got the page here as well as the insights automatically, the sentiment and immediately I can begin prompting it. You're good to go. And as Batsel said, in this case, which is nice, we do have proper headings and footers. So it grabbed the direct content off the site. And then just to close the loop for everyone saying, okay, sitemap, that seems interesting. We've got one of our favorite, you know what? I can't say favorite because they're all of our customers are our favorite customers, but ones that we're you know, lucky enough to work with very intimately. Mytrex recommend you checking out. Not all of us are building commercial buildings in need of solar cladding and solar panels, but interesting company either way. And so it is now sorting through the sitemap in a moment. It will load all the links will then populate here. And you can now choose which ones you want to include in the folder, which ones you do not want to include. As Vatsal mentioned, there may be ones, hey, I don't care about cookies or I don't care about this. Very easy to unselect and go ahead with those links that you only want to include. I'm going to save our own bandwidth. In this case, I won't go through the final upload, but confident, just hit the upload button and you're all good to go. And then you can see just how quickly you could scrape an entire website and then analyze that information. 
So we're now jumping to individual level analysis and field mapping. And this one is, this is a big concept that we have been working on for a long time. And so why was this so important? What was happening was research teams specifically, but there's other use cases of this. We have a note on quantitative assessment, which is really interesting. We'll dive deeper into this work. Coming to speak, say they're uploading a bunch of interviews or survey data. What they were trying to do was quantify the themes across that data. And so in the default behavior, you would go to a, you'd upload the CSV, and you'd go to the folder level, and then you could ask a question and you say, hey, what were the top themes? But what's really interesting here is because of character limitations and all these pieces, it would summarize the top themes, but you wouldn't be able to associate those directly with the files within the system. And it wasn't as comprehensive. And because of the character limitations, some information could be abstracted away during that process. We wanted to avoid that. And researchers, of course, they care that the results that they're getting are accurate, that they consider all the information in context. And in the end, they can quantify this information. So that is what this functionality unlocks and is a huge addition to the platform. I used to have to help clients do this outside of the system. It was a nightmare. It was a mess. And I cannot tell you the relief I have to see this in the platform. That's so anything that you want to add here before we jump into the actual walkthrough? I would definitely make a strong statement that after studying, you know, all the tools available in the market and also understanding the technology landscape on how this system works, I can guarantee that you will never ever find this solution yet. And this is the first ever solutions to run on all the files and also map the responses to this particular field where you can do the analysis and look into those data and the responses at scale. So we are not talking about chatting with your one file, generating summary or action item X, Y, Z, but this is, let's say you have hundred reviews, which you already mentioned, but also want to do run on every single file automatically rather than you spending time on manual effort. So that is the first of our solutions we have. It's worked perfectly smooth. It doesn't matter if one of a long file, do a long file or a paper. Beautiful. And we touched on one part of the use case, which is theme identification and classification. We're going to walk through this in a demo in a moment, but I also wanted to touch on this quantitative assessment element. So a couple ideas for this. We have a lot of um, teams who are using Speak to monitor phone calls. And what they're trying to figure out is what were the top issues that happened in that call? So using this exact functionality, you can look at every single call individually, identify the theme, and then you can quantify that over a uh, time period. And as I go through this demo here, going to be able to share some best practices on how you can achieve this to move from more of this exploratory identification or classification of theme to a standardized set so that you can really have that quantitative element to this data. And I think a lot of people are struggling with this goal, taking this unstructured information and turning it into this quantitative output that is valuable for businesses and for organizations. So super uh, excited about that. I wanted to just touch on, I've touched on this on another call. So just to fully understand this, there's a, a mock synthetic data that we've generated here and it's got a bunch of columns. It used to be very difficult to even get this data in speak. We've made this much easier and we're continuing to make uh, improvements. So I just wanted to walk through this entire flow. I'm going to try to be as quick as possible because there's a lot of columns here, but to help you fully grasp and understand the value and potential uh, in this system. So first of all, I want to not send this to the unassigned because then I could have a messy start to this process. I'm going to send it to the Spotify cancellation data folder. And now I want to start mapping this information. So in this case, I've created uh, a nice file name. You can see it in that data here. And you'll see me quickly go through and map everything. So what could bring you back? This is one of the opportunities for a text column, but in this case, I'm gonna pass that to uh, a field and the text column, what we're truly trying to analyze in this data set is the cancellation reason. If I jump back into this, you can see, okay, what's going on? Why, why did people cancel? But they gave all these different answers and you really don't have that good of an idea or understanding of the th major theme in a condensed, nice way that then you can quantify. I'll continue on my journey. What's nice is you're most likely getting data like this in your surveys and in the information that you have. 
And so we didn't want to break that structure. We wanted you to be able to keep it directly in that. And I'm going a little bit overboard here. I just wanted to close a couple last things and I won't even do all so we can just move through. But you can see all of these columns are available. And then I can choose to move forward and import. In this case, I feel ready. I've got my name, I've got my text. I've got a couple data points here. Uh, I could expand this, but I'm saving you time and us all time. And then I will validate the mapping and move forward. And so immediately we can see that these files are being uploaded and you can see the actual text is directly in the file itself. And it's populating quickly and we'll continue to see that until all 100 files are available and ready. But so just as we wait a second, anything you want to add to this process or anything you're thinking as we go through this? Yeah, just to explain what happened to those field and where it went for the end user or listener, because you have mapped a couple of custom fields. What happened to those and how does that populate? Um, yes, yeah. great question. You set me up. Again, I didn't add everyone here, but what we're allowed to do is take the columns that we want to visit from the high level and see them directly in the uh, column structure. What we're going to jump into next is how we map the magic prompt, or the magic prompt, or the chat responses, the output to these fields. And the one that we're going to be focused on is this exploratory classification, which we can see is not populated within any information. But those other ones that I did map, you can see first name, last name, email, and you had a bunch of different options there: household income, the country they're in, and that's where this incredible opportunity to filter, analyze information comes from. So now what? Now this is the big question that we're working through. And so we've got 25. So I'll start just a few just to understand this process and we'll move quickly. So I've got, let's go five. And now we've got these files selected. We're going to move to prompts. We've got total five media files, and then we're going to map the response to the field. Yes, I do confirm I want to do it. And now I want to move it to exploratory classification. So Arya's got his custom sales assistant here. I think we've got a custom researcher. So I'm going to pick this assistant type and we've talked about this in other videos. So please feel encouraged to check that out. And now I'm going to say, please review. I always get nervous when people watch me type this Spotify cancellation data and provide the main theme for why this user canceled their Spotify plan. That's the only thing to add. Good starting point there. And even just as a case, if you forget to map your response to this field, even you have enabled that, this will be a little nudge at the end to the user to say that, hey, it seems like you have forgot to map to the field. I'll say one thing we've seen is that I, you can tell it to be precise. So please be, be concise and only provide the theme name in the output. So I think this is helping you move towards standardization already in the exploratory process that we're now going through. So you can see, please wait a moment. We are processing the request. There was no waiting around for this. I know I probably cut in the video here, but I've refreshed and we were good to go. And now we have five files. Immediately, you can see this exploratory classification done. So it, it didn't perfectly listen to me, but it did pretty good. We know this file here, it was poor user interface design. This one was user interface complexity, user experience concerns, desire for customization, and then visual appeal. And I'm guessing some of the reasons why we're seeing some similarities is in here is because of the way I had grouped these. But if we had expanded this beyond the, say, five that we had originally done, we'd even see more diversity in the themes that had came out of this. So great, we've got this. This is not quite perfect for running this quantitative analysis. So how can we move to the next step? I now want to select these few, boom. And I want to re-go back to the prompt and I want to standardize this. So that's what you might need to help me out. Uh, remember here, if you've got this there, I'm going to do the same thing. I want to map to response to field, but I now want to standardize the theme. So how can I do this? Literally pick the standardized themes, customer researcher. And I'm now going to say, hey, please review this Spotify cancellation data and give me only one theme from this list. So in this list, it's going to be, what would you say that's all? User experience was one, complexity and visual appeal. Only provide the theme back and nothing else in your response. Again, just keeping it concise and tight there. And now same process, hit enter. 
Okay. Love to see it. We're pushing this hard here live right now. And it's always amazing to see something come back the exact way that you like to see it. And this is the same experience that you're going to have if you follow what we just went through. You can now see in the standardized theme, it perfectly classified those user experience and then visual appeal. So now if I want to say, okay, out of hundreds or thousands, millions of files, what was the percentage breakdown of user experience versus visual appeal? In seconds, you can grasp that information. We're going to give you some download option here so that you can export this in a CSV and do even deeper analysis. And we're going to continue to expand the capabilities directly within the platform to understand, quantify these themes so you can come back to your team or your stakeholders or your customers with perfect insights and quantifiable data to be able to validate and provide evidence so you can make better decisions moving forward. That's all. Anything else before we move on? That was a big release there. I'm very excited to see um, that. Definitely a good, good, good demo as well. <laughs> there is no lacking and stopping between running a prompt and getting the responses. Super excited that it came very quickly and uh, accurately. That's more important part here. Yes, accuracy, very good. Especially when you have what we're seeing, which is diversity in data sets, even within our own clients, the way they're using the platform is across very different use cases, or if you're a research team, maybe you're doing one project on cigarettes and the next project you're doing is on CDUs. So you need to have this flexibility within the system to accomplish this. Wonderful. This one's going to be a little easier to cover. I think this one's a little more straightforward, but I appreciate anyone checking this out and hanging on. So meeting assistant continues to grow and speak. We've done some great videos on that. Automatically joins your call, Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Google Meets. WebEx, Cisco, we can never forget them. And you can then automatically transcribe and analyze those calls. But there are a lot of different calls that teams are having. Some of them are internal, some of them are sales calls, some of them are tech team calls, and some of them are customer or lead calls. So depending on that type of call, you want very different outcomes for the analysis that you're doing and just in by your default, the organization of where those files uh, are going. And so this is exactly what this uh, release is doing. We call it intelligent meeting routing and analysis, but you can use your calendar event titles to automatically send your meetings immediately to the desired folders. And then we can layer that on with prompt automation, share that folder specifically with the team members that you want uh, to have access to and do a bunch of visualizations and things to unlock insights and a much more mm, refined granular way based on the type of meeting uh, that you're doing. But that's all. Anything that you want to add about intelligent meeting routing uh, before we walk into a little demo here? Yes, a couple of things. So what we used to have is like a couple other places to set this up. You need to go to the profile section, assistant preferences, and there are like too many preferences and the selections of the customizations we were offering. <laughs> so what we have done even with this update is like cluster all the configurations and settings you need under one hood. So you open this interface, you open this dialogue, and either your customized assistant, you can set up how do you want to share. And of course, this intelligent meeting routing configuration, which you will see in a moment in a demo account. So there's one more thing which we are working on is which is the joining rules. Because what is happening that, hey, I have synced my calendar, but that doesn't mean I wanted to hop on all the meetings and, and record it. So are there any ways to exclude such kind of meeting so that it doesn't join. So that is the joining rule. Let me put that way, which is coming soon, where you can configure those options the same way you are setting up your routing yeah. analysis. And just to add to that now, we love everyone building meeting assistance across the world right now, but over and over again, we hear that teams are upset because these meeting assistants are constantly trying to join every call, even if they don't want them to join the call. And without this intelligent meeting routing, all these files are ending up in these folders that maybe everyone can access when there's very sensitive details in those calls that they don't want other team members to necessarily be able to view. So this system allows you to completely eradicate those risks. And it's one of the only systems in the market that allows you to do it. And none of them do it as intuitively and easy as this. We're in our own Speak account right now. And just to show, we use our platform every single day. We absolutely love it. And we're also engineering for ourselves to solve these problems. So this was a problem that we were having where our sales calls were merging in with our internal team calls, with our development calls, and it just didn't make sense. So as Vatsal said, all these are now really combined into this nice little area. But what we wanted to highlight in this piece here right now, in this section on this release is 
you can set up these conditions. So we already have a bunch of conditions set up. For example, if it's a demo, we know that it's a sales call. So we're going to route it to the sales call folder. If it's the Speak AI weekly kickoff meeting, we know it's the full team. But if tech is in the title, we know that's a development team call. We got we probably could standardize our meeting names a little bit better, but we're doing the best uh, we can. And we've obviously got lots of other stuff on the go. And what do I need to do? What's very interesting is I can add that condition. And you can see what's really nice is if you are already using the calendar, it will pull in different meeting titles, and then you can use that with the condition contains to then route to the folder. So just as an example, test event contains or equals. And then in this case, if it's a test event, we want it to go on assign because we know we're just testing something. That's anything else that you want to add here to this flow? Yeah, no, I think you touch on the condition, which is important because if you want to just match, let's say daily debrief, which is maybe everyone's stand-up call in all the meetings, you can just match the exact event with the conditions and it will go to that particular folder that you have selected. And the connected dot I just want to make here is why is this crucial is that if you have set up the automation to run the prompt, either generate the summary, generate any action items after the call ends, it will create a report and send it to you. The crucial part is the routing, why it comes into the play, because when you set up the automation, you need to select the folder where a new file comes in. So end-to-end -end automated workflow for you. Yes, uh, that is exactly it. And so in this case, we have an automation that is specifically for our sales call summarization. And now we can select only that sales call folder and it talks about, hey, what happened for the sales rep? What happened with the customer for speak? We could even separate this even more granular and say, hey, first demo versus second demo versus lead versus active customer and really build these mind-blowingly precise automations as well as we know every time we do a tech team call, we're looking for the next steps in terms of development scope or yep. what blockers does the team have? And immediately you can identify that after the call, you're not going to get a sales call summary. So that is where this comes into it. And again, as far as we know, that's why I just do not know any other company giving this capability right now. This uh, so end-to-end -end workflow, yeah. absolutely. There are a couple of companies who, of course, does the automated summary generation or the action item, but you wanted to have your own customizations in a nature that you can create the desired output of that summary. And and the flexibility the system provides is unbeatable, you yeah. know, compared to the other products in the market. Because once you are hooked in, once you have set up this workflow, for example, Tyler, if you close this dialogue and see how many times you have done these automations, yeah. it's like it's completely automated and you are getting either the Slack notification. If you are conf configured, you are getting the email notification, including the meeting uh, player so that you can go back and review what exactly are happening and stuff. Let's just close this loop just to give one other understanding of just how powerful this is. So sales calls, I've now got that selected. I'm going to run a magic prompt. You're going to see some language change here, but that doesn't uh, necessarily matter. We've got our sales assistant type. So now we can customize the assistant type. And it said, please review the transcripts from our sales calls for the day and produce a daily summary report to help us grow. And I could refine this prompt uh, until the end of the day, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to close this loop and I'm going to schedule this. So I'm going to say, hey, let's look at today. And then we're going to send at 6 p.m. every day. I can now create that and only the sales call will be analyzed and it will run this analysis. So now every single day, we're going to get a daily summary of the sales calls. All right. That's all that you cover this. I think this was a great addition that you added to the platform. And obviously people relying very heavily on our meeting assistant now for crucial meetings. So we wanna make sure that they're all good, they're confident and they know exactly what happened in the calls there. Sure, I, I will be honest. Uh, I, I study a lot of tools in the market, like what are the, the pros and cons? And one of the cons is that many times the meeting assistant doesn't join the meeting due to some configuration issue, some technical issue, and there is no transparency on what happened or why my call didn't record it. And we have seen in the beginning with the V0.1 when we have launches, what happened, why is my recording? To create a transparency, when you go to this meeting assistant list, it's like simple under the action item, you can see the event history. And what does that mean to the end user? is to look into the meeting history and see when a meeting assistant joined the call, what happened during that call and when it ended. 
The crucial part is like in-call recording and in-call not recording, which is if you don't include the meeting assistant, many times that happens and they end up like, oh, where is my recording? But meeting assistant was never included. It was just waiting uh, under, in the waiting room. Uh, so that helps. And also we have the different statuses on the table, which also indicates the same part that in-call recording, in-call not recording. One thing I will add here is that this is the event history of the meeting assistant, but we are also getting asked is what is the timeline or the history of the participant? Because many times they wanted to understand how when you share a screen or what happened or how many participants were there looking at the, the participant history. Because when we fast through the calendar, it's not necessary that all the participant will join. Many times that doesn't and they wanted to see who were there in that meeting. That is another addition which we will with kind of the participant history uh, as well. Beautiful. We continue on our journey of what's new uh, in Speak March 2024 edition, which I must say feels like our biggest and most monumental edition to date. We aim to continue that, but I hope you also just see the transformational progress that is happening at rapid speeds within the system. We touched on a bunch of these concepts in previous calls. This one is this idea of field mapping, not to be confused with the prompt or chat response to field mapping. We could maybe title this better, but we just wanted to show or highlight one part, which is say you have a bunch of files within your system and maybe there's a new categorization of information that you want to print. Maybe that a bunch of these people are from Canada or they're this age range, but you don't have that in the data when you first imported it. It's now very easy from the folder level to then update uh, those fields in just couple clicks uh, to automatically organize, label your information. And then that has all these downstream effects on the analysis and outcomes that you're uh, looking to achieve. We'll use this same example. We've got some focus groups here and we can see some of them have some tags. This was our legacy organization within the system. And now with these fields, it all starts to come together. So we'll do one example. Here, I'm going to click the six files. All I have to now do, select field mapping. And we know these people are from Canada. And we also know that Canada city that they're in is Toronto. And we know the continent is North America. Simply hit update all. And those fields are updated now. Where are they? You ask, well, got them. We got them here for you. Country. I know we've got a city somewhere here, and then we've also got the continent. Beautiful, immediate, direct. And now when you are running analysis, you can say, hey, I only want people who are from Canada or from this city and just close this loop. And we say, these people, they're from a different spot. They're in uh, they're in Edmonton. I like Edmonton, uh, a little colder than where we are, but uh, still a wonderful place, close. And you can now see they're in Edmonton. So three, if my math is right, three in Toronto, three in Edmonton. And this is also part of that quantitative analysis that Speak can unlock when you tie it to your qualitative data. That's all. Anything else to add? Just to double click on that, for example, hey, if you don't want to display all the fields like a Google Sheet on this table, if you don't want to see all the data on the at the table level, you can go to this individual file. And we also have created a separate section for the fields for you to review and look into that. And also the same thing you can do, go to the more, click on the field mapping, and what it will allow you to do here is you can see the actual data for those selected field here as well. So either you can manage an individual file, and of course at the folder level to update many files at once. Okay, okay. I had to cut a part out because I got so excited at the end of that about a new idea using fields. I'm not even, can't even disclose it right now. We'll maybe talk about that in a future episode. But for now, let's jump on to something really important. Security, yeah. privacy, protecting sensitive details within the Speak application. Vatsal took this on with force. So I'm going to let him jump in and just explain the two-factor authentication and how that works within Speak. Yep, yeah, I'll start with, I have maybe 15 or 20 tools which I have converted to the Google Authenticator or any authenticator, just make sure I have the two-factor authentication enabled for the platforms I care and the sensitive data I might have stored on those platforms. So to be honest, this is by nature, it becomes so obvious that we should and we need to have this, uh, you know, for the security reasons. We do a lot, but this is another big part where you don't want to allow 
anyone to log into your platform, either by team or by mistakenly the password has been shared between the teams just in case. This is very straightforward. You go to the profile section, it works exactly how you visualize and think. Once you're done on that, it will give you a unique QR code where you open the Google Authenticator or any other application, Authenticator application on your phone. Scan this QR code, it will give you the six digit code. Once you enter that, it will verify. And if it is okay, it will uh, enable your uh, two-factor authentication. What happens when you come back to the next time, it will force you to enter the two-factor code like any other platform you might have done on two-factor authentication and worked perfectly. This is, I would say, necessity for security reasons. And also it is not something nice to have, but to be honest, must to have for security. We have every sales call and team call logged into speak. And we need to protect that data uh, as, as much as possible we can and be confident with that. And so this is just another step in achieving that. Now, I've revealed a secret key. We're going to reset this. So don't you think that nah, this secret key is going to work? <laughs> yeah, reset every time. Kind of yeah. seconds, so all good there. Then we are moving on to submitting feedback on chat responses. And we have had this functionality available for a bit. But what we hadn't really allowed you to do was give that feedback at scale. And Providing feedback on chat responses, whether you're happy or not happy with them is very helpful for you, but for us to be able to optimize this system to produce responses for you. And so when you hit either the thumbs up or thumbs down, we have this understanding mechanism, this system that is helping us gather feedback that you're giving us and then allowing us to be able to make optimizations on an account level basis or across the system as a whole to help everyone who's using Speak get better responses. So if you do this as a couple of standardized sets of issues, or you can write your own. Very simple, if you are in the account, you can hit the history, you can see the positive icon. I think this one was great. And I can say, hey, this was an accurate response and send, great. We just got it. You can see the down arrow disappeared. And when you hover back over this, you can see the option that you chose. Now, in this case, I can see a file was run and I can see, okay, interesting. These don't quite fit, these standardized ones, but I can see that speakers were not labeled properly. And now I can hit send and you can see that there was a down rating on this and you can see the exact reason why that down rating was provided. So that's coming to us. We're trying to understand what's happening and then making corrections or improvements as quickly as humanly and technologically possible to make sure that if you ever run a prompt like this again, your next answer is going to be even better. Uh, that's one thing to add on this. No, I would just encourage you if you're listening, if you're using just, uh, you know, gives us thumbs up or thumbs down according to how you feel for the responses so we can improve. Uh, for the next version. Oh, another massive demand over the years here in Speak has been live transcription. There's a couple of layers to where we can add this. One would be within the meeting assistant. Uh, and when you're in the meeting assistant, a page pops up and you can see the transcription in real time. That's not live yet. There's also the embeddable recorder, where if you have the embeddable recorder and someone's submitting you know, files for you that they can see the live transcription, just another signal and confidence indicator that something's being recorded and maybe even helps them process their thoughts and submit a better response. But then directly in Speak, there is also an in-app recorder that allows you to record at any time. This is what's truly live here today. It's almost a little secret, to be honest. Uh, if you watch this, you're the one having this information revealed. So I can click on this little link and uh, I'll do that here now. You can see record live equals true. You have the option to do audio or video. And now if I record, I can start recording. You're gonna see that my voice is now going. And in a few seconds, just as it logs everything, you will see the transcription is here and live. So that's about as simple as it gets. Anything that you wanna to add to this live transcription element in the in-app recorder and speak? A couple of things I just wanted to add. One, we did play with the timestamp as well. If you are monologuing, you will see the timestamps are being added. And another part you are seeing is that it is not capturing, maybe you have headphones on, so it is not capturing through your microphone. So that is something we will work upon on how to capture even through different devices. So uh, that is one. And the second is to not just display the transcription, but we also have the live insight layer or yeah. the sentiment layer, which you can look into that and generate the live analysis. 
And guess what? Of course, this is not going to be within the platform, but could be integrated with the API mm -hmm. as well with the speak. So you are not just getting the transcription, but you are getting the analysis and the insight layer. So that is it for now. Yeah. But if you are watching this session, you have access to this link. Take a look. It almost, of course, analyzes in real time. Yeah, and I think the combination of live transcription and then the analysis is really powerful. Say you're on a call with a customer or a lead and you're noticing certain themes emerge. At some point, you can bridge this together with the knowledge bases and ask questions in real time. There's something really powerful here. I will say, why haven't we prioritized this from day one? I think technology continues to grow at such an exponential pace, but live transcription is still not as accurate as retroactive analysis. And so just want to set those expectations. You can see I'm talking and you're seeing the transcription and you can see it's very good. But if I upload this file at the end, I don't know about if you'd be able to give the exact percentage, but I'm saying maybe 15 to 20% increase in accuracy doing a retroactive analysis versus the live transcription. And because normal retroactive transcription has gotten so fast, an hour file could come back in less than a minute. Those accuracy gains can be very worthwhile. However, saying that there are some very meaningful and useful use cases of live transcription that it's required. And with that, the accuracy is still pretty mind blowing and has made huge leaps even since we started working on this in 2019. Another part is, for example, if you enable this in a meeting room, for example, the part with that is you don't get the speaker mapping here. So yeah. you don't know which speaker is talking. So that fundamental gap is there. And you need to have to do the, you know, the post-processing to understand uh, the frequency change for the speaker and at least have something labeled there. So that is one part which will be missing in the live transcription for a time. But hopefully, again, these innovations and the technology changing at rapid speed, we could have this update soon. Um, and how do we also make these innovations or make these improvements? It's demand from you. So if you want this and you need this, let us know, tell us, and we're happy to prioritize for you. But if we release this and no one's using it or they're not sending us messages, then we're going to prioritize other things within the system. We encourage you, send us a message if you want live transcription, and we'll continue to improve this for you. Thank you for checking this out. I know I'm probably being distracting by playing this, so I'm going to stop. And immediately after, I can either reset I can download the file or I can upload it for that retroactive analysis. I'm just going to hit upload for now so we didn't lose it. Okay. Ooh, those were the major releases in Speak this month. That's a lot. We've been here for quite a while already and just wanted to cover a couple other product updates. I wouldn't even want to necessarily classify them for minor because a lot of them are pretty major and also huge life improvement updates for you as a user or customer of Speak. That's why you were deploying most of these while I was in the, the jungle in Mexico. So maybe I'll let you walk through these and just what's relevant to users and, and why some of these uh, other product updates are valuable. Yeah. So there are two parts, right? If you look at the, the entire quarter one, and if you have login, uh, have any recorded video of December compared to as we are recording on April 3rd, uh, see the huge improvement on the user interface and the user experience. Either could be the navigation menu and the tables and the way we display the data because it's too complex. It was the crucial element. And that is the one update we have made, including the navigation, but also improving how do we structure the table in such a way which fits on your screen also make it more meaningful for you to navigate through that. So that is the one element which makes a lot cleaner and also make it more meaningful for the end user to manage it. And why is that so? A couple of reasons, which is we have included the custom display of dynamic columns. Uh, and to do that, we need to have those dynamic setup for the table so that it fits nicely on your interface or making sure on all the pages, including the recorder or magic prompt, it fits nicely. So that is one. The other one was the user profile section. And that was the only place where we can have a lot of customizations and the customization option. So we reduce that, we improve, reduce any extra options and merge with the meeting assistant. We have already go through the meeting assistant section where assistant preferences, the dialogue or the interface where you can set up and configure all the sections. Of course, the same way apply for the magic prompt. Before it was like dump all your chats on the navigation menu. But now if you look, it's grouped by, by the dates. And another interesting part we have seen, a lot of teams 
I used to share this folder within their team and they also wanted to display the prompts, but they don't want to share the sensitive prompt they have right because it's obviously their own improvement they have made. So we used to display the only the dates, but what we have worked upon is the actual editing functionality where you can just click on edit and change the title of that prompt so that you can confidently display this prompt when you share either this folder or the prompt within your team. So again, this looks minor, but it's a huge experience change when you deal and want to navigate through this prompt. And you can say it's about a year ago and two years ago because we launched this feature two years ago with the V0.1. That's a couple of changes we have made on the Magic Prompt UI. Another couple of points are more aligned with the bug fixes, which we have encountered after releasing the calendar integration with the Outlook, where sometimes the occurrence events are not populating properly the way the Outlook works. So maybe an integrity details or the bug fixes on a couple of things. And what we used to do before is we are scheduling only your meetings for three days in advance and fetching only seven days of your calendar events. We have drastically changed to schedule your meeting 15 days in advance to give you some confidence that your meeting is scheduled, meeting assistant will join. And also you can see all your calendar events in 30 days advance and in your account. Beautiful. You did a good job moving through a pretty big list there. And we'll uh, continue to release these improvements to the platform that might feel tiny, but incrementally create a wonderful uh, experience for you inside the system. So that brings us to What's coming next? A little, what, a looking glass? A glass? I don't know. What's that thing called? I don't know. Where you rub it and you get some future. <laughs> One of the things we've talked about for a long time is automatically summarizing files for you. And I think there's still some work on our side to figure out the best way to do this because we do see such different summarization and uh, requirements for the type of analysis that is being done. But even how can we use your job title and goals within the platform to help you summarize data in a more concise way? So that's one thing that we'll continue to work on. The other one where all these pieces have really compounded and come together is this idea of these fields. And you look within a folder, just as an example, and you've got one focus group and then you've got another focus group. What's the difference between these two calls? One group had people aged 25 to 35 who were from Canada, and the other group had aged 36 to 44 who are from the United States. What's the similarities there? And what's the difference? And how can we automate the discovery of that for you as quickly as possible? This will just take speak to another level and allow you to do analysis that no other system has today. And honestly, I don't think is gonna have in the future either, just on the depth that we want to go here. Yeah, these are, these are connected dots which we have spoke today and also in the past, which is streamlining the integration management, which and where we offer multiple integrations and requests are coming every single day. For example, either it's integration with monday.com or Slack uh, and more, which is possible, of course, right now with the Zapier, but that's the efforts you need to put down or pay for those apps to configure and let it run. So that is a couple of integration will, which are coming next in this release. And also ensuring within this integration page, which you have seen it, how we can make it more meaningful and make it more smooth for you to manage and also configure easily. Right now, there is no configuration where you can activate or connect. You need to go to the separate screen, but this is the interface which you will work upon to allow you to connect, let's say the Slack channel, uh, you know, have a drop down to connect the channel where you wanted to send the messages and give you some more options. So that's there. And another part is we have seen some issues with the CSV upload. So how can we change that workflow to make sure the experience stays consistent and you have the streamlined experience when you upload, maybe Tyler, you uploaded the Spotify cancellation data, which have more than 20 columns. So how can we make it smoother for you to not go through yeah and see like those filled. When we first started Speak, we had a huge desire to release Android and iOS applications. And I know we still have some code sitting somewhere yeah. where we've made some progress on them. And then the world changed uh, and we all ended up in Zoom conferences and Google Meet conferences. And so the meeting assistant was prioritized, but the world continues to evolve and people are going back into person. And just in general, there are a lot of these, I wouldn't even call them edge cases, very popular use cases of where you need an application to record confidently on device on Android or iOS. 
And so this is a big undertaking and it's a little bit of a cognitive shift for us as a team, but it's something that is outstanding and that we know can also get speak into the hands of so many people through the app store, through the marketplace. So we will get this done. We're working on it. We've made some progress. We've got more progress to make, but it's been a constant request for us here. And we, it might not be the full suite of speak within it, but at least a nice functionality for you to capture uh, audio, video, and text at the application layer on your phone and then power the rest of the work directly within the platform and web application. A couple of things that we're missing that are out of my head for a moment, but no, we'll highlight those in a future release. And we continue to gain clarity every single day on what matters most to you. And we honor that and we'll continue to align with your needs. Again, you need something, send us a message. That's the biggest thing that you can do to get what you want from Speak. So whew, that wraps up what's new in Speak March 2024. If you want to talk to us as we've you know encouraged you throughout, send us a message on live chat, but you can also book uh, a call with the team. It will be the dog Tasha. You guys will telepathically communicate. No, you will meet with either Ari or I and always happy to connect and make sure that you're set up for success. And we work obviously through this technology layer of speed, but we work really closely with a lot of our customers. And we don't want you to think, hey, we're this unapproachable team that's building software. That's not what we believe in here. And we want to work directly with you to build better solutions for what you're trying to achieve. If you are interested in speak, whether you want to talk to us or not, you can build up your perfect speak plan. And we're, unlike other companies, we're not forcing you into these very rigid plans. We're allowing you to build the plan that is perfect for you. And in some cases, this has been a difficult trade-off for us because it adds a layer of complexity for people to subscribe for speak. But with the right education, with the right guidance through, we can see people are building exactly what they need. They're not overpaying for anything and they can upgrade if they need more or they can up or downgrade if they need less. And that's why so many people love and are happy with Speak and we want to continue to support that for you. And then lastly, hey, want to make some money? I'm sure you do. So if you do, you can make money by just sharing Speak. All you have to do is create a simple link, push that anywhere you want. We have 2000 plus affiliates, some that I just sent a bunch of money to them yesterday. I love sending that money. Hit click and I say, thank you. And we love sending money uh, to you. So use that. We're going to bring someone on to help support this affiliate program as a whole to find new people to join the program, but also support you with documentation and resources so that you have everything you need uh, to promote Speak in the way uh, that it deserves to be promoted because this platform continues to grow. And I truly do believe that with this, release in March, this end of quarter, just that. So just to reflect on this a minute, end of a quarter here, but end of our fiscal year here in Speak as a company. We have made huge strides in the last year from a business perspective, as well as a technology perspective. I'm very proud of that effort of the entire team. We're a small team, but we more than doubled <laughs> in the last oh, year. <laughs> yeah, uh, so. We are less than our fingers. And yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much, Vatsal. Any last words from you before we close this out? No, I think this won't be possible again without the team efforts and so, as we already mentioned, a small team, but like small, powerful, focused, aligned team where you don't need maybe 100 people to make this product. And when we look at the competitor landscape, they have not just the team, but also the other couple of pillars which then boost. But for us to, you already mentioned, stay close to the customer and serve their needs and make it more aligned to what they're looking for. So I think that what makes us separate out from those companies and also why we still exist. <laughs> exactly. exactly. So that's the bottom line here and just not exist, but also changing at the rapid speed and also align with our customer in the growth. So more work to do is more ahead in terms of the product and the business. So stay tuned. Beautiful. Okay. Then that ends our March, 2024 session of what's new and speak. We look forward to seeing you on the other side here. The year's coming by quick. Vatsal, thanks for joining for all the work you and the team does. And for everyone who's joining us today, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye. Thank you everyone. Bye-bye.